A lot has happened over the last year, and really it's been everything but normal. But as time continues to go by, we're all starting to understand that we may truly never go back to what we see as normal. More jobs than ever are letting employees work completely from home. More people than ever are using their voices and platforms to stand up for social injustice, and world leaders are coming together to find the drastic effects of issues like climate change. Thankfully, there are a lot of young, bright minds out there, and hopefully this video will be a source of motivation for all of you, whether you're class of 2025, to class of 2024 or just someone trying to find their place in this world. I don't know if it's just me, but hearing the graduation years increase every year just makes me feel really old. Class of 2025. That's wild. If you're new to this channel, my name's KJ. I graduated MIT in 2020, and I'm currently taking a leave of absence from Stanford. I get lots of people from Instagram and in the comments asking for advice. So in this video, I wanted to share a lot of what I've learned over the last five or so years as I navigated college life. As I said, whether you're in the class of 2025 or not, uh, hopefully this video will help you out. My first piece of advice is to find and do what you truly like, because that's what you'll be most successful at. If a certain field resonates with you, you'll be much more likely to work hard and get to the level you need to be to land that job or opportunity that you strive for. In any field, there are going to be those inflection points of really challenging times where you question the direction you're taking at that moment. But if you really care about the specific things you're doing, you'll actually make it over those humps. In my case, although I'm an aerospace engineer, I never really resonated with those purely technical airplane and space-oriented classes. And I found myself really gravitating more towards the algorithmic and the autonomous systems classes. And in my head, that distinction started to form during my sophomore and junior year. I'd find myself naturally wanting to do those specific assignments and projects before any of the others. I found myself researching things on the side just to learn more. And naturally, it was in these classes where I did the best and felt the most comfortable. Not because the classes were any easier, but because I genuinely cared about the subjects that were being taught. In both the short term and long term, you'll do better in the field that you're truly passionate about. So if you have room in your schedule, make sure to dabble in some of those classes that step outside of your current field of study, just to see if you can be interested in it. And if something resonates with you, pursue it. That being said, it's also okay to change your mind. It's impossible to know everything right off the bat when you're entering college about what you like and what your passions are, and that's okay. At MIT, I knew people who switched from chemical engineering to computer science, or from computer science to straight management and finance. I used to be of the train of thought where I felt as if a commitment was a commitment, so I just had to stick to it. But with time, I realized that life is too short to be doing something that you don't really care about. This is something that I realized pretty late, but is a big reason why I wake up every day feeling excited to work. I've added a major, multiple minors, dropped those additions, changed academic concentrations, and I'm currently taking a leave of absence from Stanford. You have a lot more control over your situation than it may seem, and I feel as if a lot of schools, although you may have to search for the right people to talk to, have people that want to help you figure out what's best for you. This gets me into my next point, which is meet new people. Whether through groups to do assignments with or outside of classes in the form of student groups or clubs, these people that you meet in college and university could be lifelong friends and people you turn to when you need advice, a foot in the door for a job, or a startup co-founder. Regardless if you utilize the network effect of these friends moving forward, in the short term, these people are going through school just like you and could be people who you can lean on for support along the way. I've personally made some lifelong friends at MIT and they have gotten me through a lot. And that's something that I will be forever grateful for. And I hope everyone gets to experience those types of friendships. In terms of internships, those do get pretty tricky. In the beginning, it's really hard to get your first one because of lack of experience. And and you will get ghosted and you probably will just get turned down a good amount in the beginning. But through the process, you'll start to learn what they're looking for. And as the years progress, you'll gain more of the tools that are attractive to companies. I would say that when interning, be open to stepping a bit out of your comfort zone. Even if, for example, you're an aspiring software engineer, gaining experience in project management or consulting may open your eyes to other roles that could really resonate with you. I'm biased, but I also think it's a great thing to be a part of a startup at some point. 
because you'll start to experience some of the benefits that those offer, like a fast pace, more project ownership, direct mentorship from leadership, and an elevated level of excitement. In general, internships are a great way to experiment with what you're really passionate about. The first internship is always the most challenging to get, but at least for engineering, once you get the first one, it should be much easier to get subsequent internships as long as you did meaningful work in the first one. And if internships aren't coming your way, take the initiative to do projects on your own. A lot of the times I'm more impressed by a project that a potential intern took the initiative to see all the way through than the more busy work type tasks that a student may have been given at a past internship. Make sure to keep your health first. You should strive to do the best that you can in school, but the best you can should take into account your needs of quality sleep, rest, mental breaks, and healthy relationships. Have open conversations about grades with your professors. Know what P sets can get dropped from your grade, whether they give extensions or not, etc. Professors are humans too. And if you're having a particularly terrible week, don't be afraid to let your other professors know. The worst thing they can say is no, but in a lot of instances, they actually empathize with you. And I've had professors give extensions to the entire class, even if they said they never give extensions. You're going to have weeks where all of your assignments pile up times where you'll be sleeping less and stressing more. During these times, I've learned to take a step back to evaluate my priorities. For example, if I'm doing well in a certain class where I know this one problem is only worth a fraction of a percentage of my overall grade, then I won't do that problem if I'm overwhelmed with other classes at the moment. These types of decisions might seem counterintuitive, but the extra five hours you gain from not doing this particular problem will help you get more sleep, which overall will just help in all of your other aspects of life and will probably have you do better in those other classes that you weren't doing so well in. That being said, always make sure to come back and at least read over the solution key once they're posted so that you understand the problem that you skipped in case a similar problem appears on an exam. You should also really make an effort to find things that are non-academic that you can go to in times of stress. I'd also recommend one of those things be a physical outlet while one of them a creative one. With something like dance, you may be able to do both at once. I grew to really love basketball throughout my life, so that became my physical outlet. Up until I was in middle school, I also consistently played piano. Although I've recently begun to pick up piano again, my main creative outlet has become this YouTube channel. The physical side of things allow me to de-stress, unwind, and keep my body healthy, while the creative side of things allows me to improve the way I think and problem solve. Getting into a creative mindset every so often really allows me to tackle problems from various angles, and I've even been able to directly use some of the creative skills I've gained in my more technical roles. Either way, having non-academic things you can turn to will help in both the short and long term. We've gotten to the point where a lot of the problems in the world are just public information now. And a lot more people are becoming more comfortable being vocal about the problems themselves and how it's affecting society. From social injustice protests last summer to many Asian Americans and Pacific Islander communities raising awareness for hate crimes that have increased recently, people are definitely making an effort to take a stand. Whether you're deeply rooted in any particular issue or not, it's important to take a step back to examine your passions and goals in the context of the world. You don't want to be at the point where 10 years down the line, you're not proud of what you're currently doing because that will eat away at you. Conversely, if you're able to align your passions with your beliefs and find positions or fields that blend both, you'll be intrinsically motivated to continue to study or to continue to make a change. And that's a type of motivation that's hard to come by. You can follow all of my advice, but you're still going to have down moments during your college career. Life is full of ups and downs, and sometimes the downs just hit at very inconvenient moments. So this video isn't to tell you the perfect way to navigate college because there is not one. I just wanted to share pieces of advice that I'd give to people based on my particular experience, especially studying STEM. The college ages are so pivotal because you're experiencing so much change. You can move to a new city, get a new job, meet a whole new set of friends, and grow into an adult. So many things are changing that I think it's important to keep certain values and mindsets in the back of your mind at all times to push you through any of those down times. I didn't want this video to be too long, so I'm gonna stop right there. Make sure to subscribe and have the notification bell click to stay up to date on my latest videos. To stay up to date with what I'm doing, make sure to follow me on Instagram and Twitter. And also let me know in the comment section what types of videos you want to see in the future, and I'll really try to make an effort to make those as I'm going to start posting more consistently. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.